Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. James Gall is who we're looking at today, so let's jump right in. And special thanks to CP for sharing this. If you aren't familiar with James Gall, he's the man behind God Encounters Ministries and has a large influence in the New Apostolic Reformation. He's got lots of products teaching about learning about the prophetic. He promotes the Passion Mistranslation and even has his own Christmas album you can buy. He's endorsed by people like Che Ann and the godfather of the New Apostolic Reformation, Peter Wagner. So, like we say, birds of a feather. And if the birds are vultures, you might want to find a new flock to learn from. As you can see, he's got many classes you can take, 20 in total, and you have options for a monthly plan or a convenient one-time purchase plan as well. There's even add-ons to boost whatever one-time product purchase you make. And regardless of your choice, this will give you bulk discounts on his other books and study guides. Whatever happened to freely you have received, freely give. But these must be important because the Bible doesn't teach many of these topics, so you have to go through him. Things like angelic encounters today, releasing spiritual gifts today, consecrated contemplative prayer, which is not biblical, and many others. But today we'll look at a video with him on the Jennifer LeClaire show about unlocking secrets to seer realm elevation. But he doesn't mention a single Bible verse in this whole 15 minute video, and I will leave a link to it below. Well, you know, James, you wrote like the blockbuster book, The Seer. Wow, so her first statement is promoting his blockbuster book, The Seer. And by the way, seers are only spoken of in the Old Testament, never in the New Testament. And really gave, I believe, a lot of language, a lot of mm -hmm. definitions. I mean, Bob Jones came before you, he yes. mentored you. But you came and you brought, I think, apostolically language to this prophetic realm that we hadn't heard before. Wow, I don't listen to prophecy bingo anymore, but I think everyone would have gotten bingo from that one statement. He gave a lot of language, a lot of definitions, and brought apostolic language to this prophetic realm that we hadn't heard before. So it's a new apostolic language that wasn't in the Bible. Warning sirens are going off already. So before we get into this... Yes. So another plug for his new book, Hearing, Confirming, and Acting on Prophetic Revelation. Talk about the seer. How okay. did you... Your, how did you come into that gift? How did you realize this is what you were moving in? Okay, that's great. So we each start somewhere, okay? And now some, uh, I call it the staircase and the elevator. Some is like a sovereign gift. And they get on an elevator and they and the bellman, old bellman, you know, they'll have them today, but they say, what floor would you like to get off on? And they go, 10th. And so they get in, they go up, the doors open, they go out and so, oh, it's a brand new world. <laughs> and it's lights, action cameras, and it's just like full blown, there it is. Other people, it's not that way. They walk staircases. They get to the same destination eventually, but they go step by step, step by step, a little platform, step by step, step by step, a little platform, you get, get it? Some, this is, this is not exactly answering your question, <laughs> Jennifer, but I think it might help some people. Because some people is just like, well, that's not fair. How did they get that? That's not right. Because some people are born with, right. some people you're born again with, some are baptized in the Holy Spirit with, some it's gradual progression out of faithfulness, calling, diligence, wow, yeah. And others, it's just like, bam, there it is. On the seer side, it was not, bam, here it is. Wow. On the seer side, for me, it was step by step, step by step. A little bit of a platform, step by step, another place of growth. So after that mouthful of gobbledygook, he said nothing at all. And as he stated, didn't answer her question or use one scripture as an example of seers in the Bible to support what he was saying. But let's continue. And so coming from a background of a left brain that was uh, 
large and then the right hemisphere, but it was actually equal. So what I mean is creativity, prophetic, and systematic, logical. So that is unusual for prophets. Mm -hmm. And so it would have been the teacher and the prophet colliding. Wow. And there's where a lot for me, a conflict would come. Yes, there are different gifts. Prophets are those whom God reveals truth through, while teachers are those who explain the truths of God's word. So what's his point? It was because I had the dual nature, the dual thought processes. And I would funny say, I'd play ping pong with myself. <laughs> and I would be here at the end of the one table doing creative, prophetic, whatever, spontaneous. And I would flip down here on the other side and I would analyze it. I'd go hit the ball back myself and, you know, my illustrations, I hope that they make some sense to some of you out there, okay? No, he's not making sense to me. Remember that most of these so-called prophets are hearing from God about stuff. And this whole episode is about how to unlock seer realm elevation. Seers are prophets who saw visions, pictures, or scenes in the mind's eye, dreams, or even open visions. Jeremiah was a seer prophet, and after he had a vision, God gave him insight to what it meant. Most of today's NAR prophets and seers are speaking based on what they feel or think. In regards to James Gall, it sounds more like a thought comes to his mind and then he questions whether it really was from God or not. So, so how did I come into the seer? For me, I was first a hearer mm -hmm. and I would hear the voice of the Lord out of my walk of intimacy with God as a child. Wow. And by being dedicated to the Lord by my praying mother before I was ever conceived. Wow. So my mom was pregnant with a little boy and five months along loses, as a miscarriage, loses wow. the little boy at five months on July 3rd, 1951. One year later to the exact very date, and she prayed that day, if you will give me another son, I'll dedicate him to Christ's service. Wow. So my mother was not a Hannah in that she was barren and could not because she had, my dad had two daughters, but they wanted a son. They lose the son. My mother prayed and she said, Lord, if you will give me another son, I'll dedicate him to Christ's service. One year later to the exact date, I came forth out of my mama's womb, <laughs> Amanda Elizabeth, Amanda, a derivative of Anne, Grace, Elizabeth, consecrated one. So consecrated by grace, I say, I came out my mama's womb, waved my hand and said, hallelujah. <laughs> so when I say, Jesus is all I've ever known, I mean it. Jesus has been my best friend every conscious day of my awareness. I started that way, and that is the way I will end. This is nonsense. Jesus was not his best friend from the moment he was conceived. Psalms 51 tells us that we were brought forth in inequity and in sin did our mothers conceive us. Romans 5 says that we've all sinned. We are sinners not because we sin, but we sin because we are sinners. All of humanity except Jesus are born with a sin nature. Nobody, including James Gall, is born with Jesus as his best friend. Because when you study about a prophet, mm -hmm. Abraham is the first one who's mentioned. He's, we call him a patriarchal prophet. Yes. I think it might be Genesis chapter 20 around verse 6, mm -hmm. and he's called a prophet. Now, Job is also a prophet, so maybe he's the first. But in chronological, we know that Abraham was a prophet. But one of the distinctions about Abraham, it was called the friend of God. Yes. That is my goal. Am I a seer? Yes. No, you're not. You're a con man that's been on the Sid Roth show many times, merchandising the gospel, and say things like this. Pastor Surprise prays for him and fire goes all over his body. And then Jesus starts teaching him about healing. Tell me what Jesus taught you. Sid, it was so amazing. I'd never heard anything like this before, and obviously I loved the Bible and church history and everything. But what he said to me was, the man of fire himself, Jesus, like Revelations chapter 1 says, 
With every wound I received, I obtained a special level of healing for my people. Now, while I explain this, I believe that faith is going to light up into people's hearts right now as I just explain this. And as I speak this out, a special level of healing will come your way right now. And he took me to his wounds. And just very quickly, he took me to his back and the 39 stripes. And within each of those places where the back of the Yeshua Jesus was laid open, I saw names of sicknesses and diseases. Mm. I saw leukemia. I saw paralysis. I saw just different names, a different scoliosis. I saw names written in every one of the stripes of Jesus. He takes me to the crown of thorns. And he says, when the crown of thorns was pierced upon my head, he said, I obtained healing for every mental disease known to mankind. He took me to his feet where they were pierced through. And he said, I obtained healing for paralysis. He took me to his hands, said something very distinct. And he said, did you know that most diseases are transferred by touch? And he said, and I obtained healing when I was nailed, pierced through in my hands. I obtained a special level of healing for every contagious disease. And right now, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to touch some of you right now. Maybe you've gotten just some kind of a, a, a sickness. Maybe you're like me with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. You have authority to give away what Jesus has given to you. And right now, I just speak to leukemia. I speak to blood disorders right now. In fact, I speak to someone who's on kidney dialysis, and God has another way. And he is going to bring purification to your blood and to your kidneys. And, and, and God, he, Jesus even was pierced through, and, and I want to say to you, he has healing for every heart. And someone with like a hole in their heart and someone with a heart murmur, the Lord himself is coming by to visit your house, and healing is coming to your house today. This is a false prophet speaking nonsense and making up stories so that he can sell this product on the Sid Roth Show, just like we're warned in 2 Peter 2.3. We really don't need to see any more, but hey, why not? In the great fast of 1983 with Mike Bickle, Joel's Army Fast, yes. I was pastoring in the area and I got touched by an angel wow. on the 19th day and we did 21 days of worship and prayer in our church in Warrensburg, Missouri, and the same night that there was an outburst of the Holy Spirit in Kansas City with Mike Bickle, there was with me in our church an hour and a half away. And I was touched by an angel helping, I was singing, leading, helping sing, lead worship. I was touched by an angel and I was catapulted into open visions. Wow, wow, wow. There's where the seer was developing but got ignited was by the impartation of heaven through a touch of an angel. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> fun stories. Yes, folks, that's exactly what they are. Stories, but they're not fun. They're deceiving people, taking their money, and leading people down a road of lies. God is the giver of his gifts, and I'm not aware of any scripture that says angels have ever ignited these gifts from God, as James Gall said happened. We're only halfway through this video, but I'm done. If you want to see this one or the Sid Roth video, I'll leave them both below. But I can only pray and hope that if you are following these false teachers, that these videos we make on revealing truth will help open your eyes to these false teachings. We'll leave it here for today, but as always, feel free to leave your comments below, and until next time, take care and God bless.